thanks everybody. Many of you will remember that last year at this conference we launched the revolutionary compact full spectrum simulator. That was the first time that accurate motion, vibration and sound could be experienced together in a driving simulator. That was the first stage of what at VA grade we call the multi-attribute journey. A journey that is bringing us and you to a new level of vehicle simulation. When you drive a vehicle, you all know that you experience the whole vehicle all at once. How the car handles, how it rides, how it sounds and vibrates. With the launch of the compact FSS, vehicle motion, ride and comfort, vibration, and sound of virtual prototypes are possible to be evaluated simultaneously. Last year, we have, uh, since last year, actually I'm happy to announce that we have already sold four compact FSS simulators. One to Alpine, one to Bentley, one to Edag, and one to a major Japanese tire manufacturer. I'll let you guess who the company is. This extraordinary success tell us that we are on the right track to deliver a truly immersive and realistic simulator to our customers. Today, we are announcing something even bigger. The next step in the multi-attribute journey, the driver emotion full spectrum simulator. Thanks. And uh, as you have uh, just seen, uh, the DIM FSS, it's a real-time drive-in-the-loop simulator which enables the complete experience of accurate motion, vibration, and sound over the complete spectrum from 0 to 20 kilohertz. The DIM FSS is the first ever simulator capable of creating a full vehicle motion together with accurate sound and vibration, resulting in a complete immersive experience. And this is the result of bringing together our expertise on vehicle dynamic simulation and NVH simulation. And as it happened for the Compact FSS, the DIM FSS is already a commercial success. We have already sold the two of them to customers with the first one being delivered to the end user in a few weeks. You will hear more about that uh, tomorrow. But now I would like to hand it over to Dave Bogema, head of uh, product management, uh, who will give you some more technical insight about uh, DIM FSS. Thank you very much. Thank you, Guido. The full motion FSS is truly a game changer in experiential simulation. Previously, when evaluating future vehicles and simulators, the vehicle dynamics of the virtual prototype would be evaluated in one simulator, and NVH would be evaluated in another. But of course, when driving a vehicle, we perceive the dynamics, the ride quality and comfort, the sound and vibration all at once. It is not possible to isolate these in a real vehicle. The most natural way to evaluate a vehicle is to incorporate all vehicle dynamics motion, vibration, and sound together in a single simulator and simulation. To accomplish this, we take a multi-stage approach. The DIM FSS is a three-stage simulator. 
The lower stage delivers the primary vehicle motion with large displacement, fore-aft, lateral, and yaw motions. The middle stage provides full six degree of freedom motion at higher frequencies. And the final stage is the all new HyperDock. The HyperDock is a highly optimized carbon fiber cockpit consisting of vibration transducers directly at the driver touch points delivering higher frequency vibration. At the heel plate, there are two shakers providing lateral and vertical vibration. At the steering column, there are four shakers providing lateral, lateral and vertical vibration at the steering wheel. And at the base of the seat, there are three shakers providing fore aft, lateral, and vertical vibration to the seat. Sound is provided through the cockpit sound drivers or through headphones. Note that with the HyperDock, there's no need of a top disc. The HyperDock connects directly to the actuators of the simulator, eliminating the mass and inertia of that top disc. The result is an unparalleled, realistic, and immersive experience with full vehicle motion, vibration, and sound, and an even more performance simulator system. But let's look at this in more detail. What does this really mean? The cockpit is 40% lighter than the average traditional cockpit plus top disc. Inertia is reduced by 70%. The center of mass is 200 millimeters lower. Structural stiffness is increased by a factor of 10. And the first natural frequency of the HyperDock is 3.5 times higher than a typical traditional cockpit. So what does all this mean? Who benefits from the DIMFSS and HyperDock? The DIMFSS gives new dimensions and possibilities for applications, including vehicle dynamics, motorsports, vehicle development, ride comfort, ADAS and AV, and others. The DIMFSS provides the most immersive possible simulation environment for multi-attribute simulation and evaluation. And one of the things you may be wondering, can I upgrade my existing DIM simulator with a HyperDoc to make it a DIMFSS? Well, I have some good news. Yes, you can. The HyperDoc can be placed on any existing VI-grade DIM simulator, upgrading that simulator to a complete DIM FSS multi-attribute simulator. Now, it's my great pleasure to turn the stage over to Diego Minen, our Chief Technology Officer, who will share a bit about how and why we developed the HyperDoc and DIM FSS. Diego? Thank you very much. Welcome here. Fundamentally, the difference that we are making now is uh, just to, thanks to the fact that we observe uh, how a real vehicle behaves in terms of high frequency, clearly uh, the excitation goes through wheels and powertrain and airflow. And, but at the very end, uh, you perceive all this vibration with your touch point on the <coughs> inside the vehicle. So we try to focus as much as possible on having this touch point, getting reliable information, vibrational information. And as you can imagine, by the way, this is a simulator created by Chat GPT or something like that. <laughs> you see, artificial intelligence is not yet <laughs> where it should be. But however, we didn't want, didn't want to mention any competitive simulator for this comparison. So it's clearly impossible to use a motion platform to get the uh, vibration, and I try to explain why. First of all, because vibration, we are, we are talking uh, with vibration at frequency higher than 30 Earth, we are talking about super tiny displacement. It's not possible to control super tiny displacement with a multi-ton motion platform. And it makes no sense. And it goes through excitation of frequency you don't want to have, that you inevitably, inevitably have, in the motion platform to perform right from a mechanical and control point of view. Then, if, even if you do things right and you don't have this tuning fork effect and you are metallic structure around, it's fundamentally wrong to try to excite the motion platform with high frequency because inside the cockpit, the vibrations are perceived in different amplitude, different phase, different 
location and the, the, they have different damping. So you have to ignore the possibility of exciting right all the touch point with uh, making the coupled vibrating. So for this reason, we develop a structure that for the first time is not a cut car adapted to a simulator. It's a structure that is designed to be a cockpit of a simulator. It's very different. It's like you design a car, instead of being connected through suspension, you attach wheels to the floor. Clearly, the car uh, is not <laughs> thought to do that and behaves very badly. So you can imagine how a car behaves if I cut it, instead of connecting through suspension, I cut it to the floor. That belongs to the past and we still support it because clearly we have to con create a continuity. But if to do it, the job right, you have to design a structure right. By the way, this structure not only has the right uh, response frequency, also can act as an acoustic cavity because we are now introducing a new technology to have the acoustic instead of with speaker only, with having panels, carbon fiber panel, that that has uh, vibrational resonance. And we can calibrate this much better. <clears throat> the fundamental thing that uh, I can repeat in this slide is that um, we uh, subdivide the simulator in multiple stages. The lighter the stage, the higher the frequency. This makes a lot of sense. And we dedicate uh, a special element to a vibration under control locally. So you can imagine that uh, I don't need much energy to have this little shaker vibrating under the steering wheel or the seat or the heel plate. Another problem of <coughs> having the clean vibration is that you don't want to disperse the energy around, that the world is, is not able to either absorb or if it bounces back, it is, uh, of course, polluting your experience. Not only the hardware work was uh, very intense and dedicated, but also the effort we, we put on software to have basically <coughs> our low-frequency soft, traditional software via DriveSim, uh, dealing with motion platform motion um, uh, for um, vehicle dynamics and ride, is now communicating with our MVH software for high frequency. So this means that we can create a real-time sound, for example, or we can create a real-time vibration if the content uh, of the MVH part uh, is developing frequency that uh, are better <coughs> uh, rendered with actuators. So this <coughs> uh, merge of software uh, functionality makes the hardware very power powerful because it's fed by the right uh, information. So thank you for your attention, and uh, again, welcome here. I hope you have a good experience with testing our simulators. Thank you.